All right, in this pro tip of the week, we are going to talk about what is malware and how you get hacked. So again, the pro tips are designed to give you some information around things that are not necessarily WordPress specific, but they could be business or personal in nature. And you can use this content. I post all this out free on the web. You'll see this on my site. You also see I post it in Google or in YouTube as well. So there's plenty of opportunities for you to get access to the pro tip of the week. So that's all of the news you hear about it. What is malware? This was coined, but I can't verify it's true, but it was by a person by the name of Steve Gibson. Uh, he talked about this and he says it's malicious software. So basically you get rid of the issues and you get rid of the soft and you got malware, right? Very simple, very, very complex too. You know, as big as security guys, we got to think with our big frontal, frontal lobe, but uh, no, it's a really good thought process. It creates something very long, malicious software into malware. Very simple. Thing with malware to be understanding is it's easy to create. It's, it can be very easy in the fact that you know, we come across like we had zero days. Oh my gosh, there's zero days and we're getting attacked. Well, in the past, what we used to do is I would create, we had a piece of malware that was unknown to the world. And this piece of malware we would use to attack a weapon or a system, right? And you attack this system. Well, what ends up happening is this malware gets out in the public domain. People start realizing what it is. It gets scanned. It gets a, a fingerprint of it occurs, right? So then what they do is, is what we do is we would go in and we would make some change to the code. Not a lot of change, but just some change. And honestly, in many cases, we would just change, add spaces, or we'd add some content that is our notes, that is basically set up so that it gives us some information about the product. But by adding that, it comes back with a new program, unknown. So they're easy to create in that regard. Now the tools are got it so that they're so plug and play. It's like having your own easy button and you just push a button and boom, you're in business. So they're, they're really not that hard to create. Now that what a zero day attack is, which I kind of talked about briefly, is it just basically it's unknown malware, something that hasn't been seen in the wild before, but it's easy to make these changes and turn known uh, malware into unknown malware. Now, I say that tongue in cheek because the, the technology is getting better where it's looking at heuristics, which was the, the active, how it acts. And it's even though the signature may be different, but it's acting extremely the same as another, as this other variant that has a signature, it'll flag on that. So the, the security cat and mouse game is, is going well and strong and security people keep putting stuff out to help fight this, but understand that the hackers are always going to be one step ahead just because they come up with a new and innovative idea. Then the security people have to come up with something on the back end to kind of contradict or to combat this easy up thing going on. So I don't know if that made any sense or not, but it sounded good to me. So a firewall will protect you from a direct assault. And we've talked about that in the podcast earlier. It's just that there's two different kinds. There's a firewall that is on your WordPress site, which acts as rules, letting you in and out. And then it also is, there's the one that's in the cloud. So there's just, just a couple different options available. But basically what it comes down to is, is that all these people attack your firewall and they come after you and it's block, block, block. Don't want to talk to you. Don't want to talk to you. And then they go, well, hey, you know what? I'm going to send this person an email and they click on the link. The moment you click on the link, you now are, it's going with the attitude of you are sending an invitation to them. You're opening up the door going, hey, I sent you an email. You look awesome. I'm going to give you like $1,000 just for clicking on this link, right? Okay, I'm really a bit valley girl kind of dates my age. But hey, that's kind of like, you know, you can just click on it and we'll let you in. Well, the point of that is, is now once you click on that link, you now are allowing a connection between you and that person out in the cloud. So once you get that email and you click on it, you're saying, yeah, this person's trusted. And boom, invitation, doors open, bada boom, bada bing, you're in. And what'll happen is they will social engineer you to get this access to your system. It's, it's done through many, many ways, but we always know money, sex, all that stuff works. Any tempting source that they can use to get access to you, they'll do it. And, and so you gotta be very careful of that. If you weren't asked for it, don't click on it, right? So it's just important that you make sure that you don't, you just don't do that. Now, in most cases, it has to have a download to your system and they will download this drop, we call it a dropper program, where they drop it on your system. And then this thing acts like a little beacon. So look at it like this, the Mars Rover, they send this Mars Rover out to 
uh, Mars, right? Not to the moon, but to Mars. They send it to the Mars, and not the Mars, Mars. They send it to the planet Mars. Well, what they do then is they send commands up to this rover. Say, go ahead and dig a hole. Okay, then they wait. And then it digs a hole. And then it sends back data. I dug a hole. Then it says, okay, go 100 feet and take a picture. Then it goes, takes 100 feet, takes a picture, and sends that back. This is how this whole system works. The, the hackers are like on on Earth attacking you who lives on Mars. And so therefore, they have to download, send this little rover to your computer so that they can have communications back and forth. Uh, to do that, in most cases, I don't say all, but in most cases, you have to be an admin credentials, which we talked about earlier, not being an admin. If you're an admin, you can now, they'll say, hey, do you, do you want to unload or open up this document? Or do you want to download this thing from this site? Oh, yeah, sure, I'll click on it. And if you're already an admin, boom, it's installed. So that's why we say don't be an admin. So what can you do to stay safe from malware? You need to educate yourself, your employees, and your family. Education is really the big factor on all this. And I've, I see this in my uh, full-time job, uh, is that if you educate people, I mean, People, they're your weakest link, but you're also your greatest asset. And people are, they want to do the right thing. So if you educate them on what does is, what is the right thing look like or what does the wrong thing look like, so don't do that and do the right thing by not clicking on it, then you, edu- it's, it's, you help yourself dramatically. Employees are still going to click on it. Family are still going to click on it. At times, everybody makes mistakes. I made a mistake. I had the same thing happen. I've clicked on links accidentally going, oh, as soon as I did, I'm like, dang, nab it. Um, so consider that. If you didn't ask for it, don't click it. Teach people that. Do not run your computer as an administrator. Don't do it. If you get out of that, especially, here's a recommendation. If you got kids and you got a computer that everybody uses, make sure you put an admin password on it, okay? Because you never know what they're going to click on. And if they go click happy and install something and they're running as an administrator, um, then it's bad, right? So I realized that the other day, I'm like, because I just reinstalled my system, a computer and and uh, I went upstairs and I started thinking, and I'm like, wait a minute, I don't think I put an admin password on this thing. <laughs> sure enough, I didn't. So that has since been changed. But the point of that was, was that if I didn't, my kids could click on something, and now with the malware, it can go anywhere, and it can end up anywhere. So you just need to consider that. Slow, down, slow you down, it's basically the whole purpose of the password protect your admin account. Again, it slows you down, but it does keep people just from clicking, okay? So make sure you password protect it. And don't make it the same password as everything else. Just don't do it. Make it something really cool. And again, on these cases, if you know that you have a computer that you do this, making the same admin account computer password on all your, ad, on all your computers, okay, let's be realistic. Making it different for everybody, it can be a pain. Maybe if you make it the same, but make it different than what you use for your banking and make it different than what you do for this is not a bad thing. And what I will do is I'll use a passphrase and I'll go into the, the part in where you set up an admin account and says, hey, what's the hint? And I will not put the full amount of what I'm looking to do, but all I do is I'll put like maybe three letters that I know that if my 15 character password, because it's a passphrase, I may put four or five, maybe one, two, three, five letters of what that account is to jog my memory so that I can know what it is. So that's something to consider as well. Just don't put the full um, password in your hint section. 